Matthew Tipton. Uh, first game as Warren Point manager, obviously disappointing then in defeat, but uh, what was your take on the match? Yeah, obviously, you know, it's a results game and I am disappointed that we're out of the cup there. You know, I thought it was an opportunity for us to go and, and get into the semi final of a major cup. So, first and foremost, disappointment. And I actually thought we'd done reasonably well. I thought we created a number of chances that we have to be more clinical with. Um, I've told the boys in the dressing room, you know, games are won and lost in penalty areas. You know, it's the chances that we miss that ultimately cost us the game because we, we score as a team, we defend as a team and obviously then the boys make a mistake at the back, they capitalise and then and we're out now of a, a major cup competition. So I suppose in you know summing it all up, yeah, I'm disappointed because I thought we I thought we made a match for them. We were down to ten men for an hour of that game and I thought we were competed well enough. I don't think the challenge does in behind. You know, we had a game plan, we knew what they were going to come and do. Um, we dealt with it. To be honest, I thought 100% we dealt with the game and then, say, a silly error costs us that gives them a goal up and we're chasing the game. But we end up with five centre forwards on the field at one stage. Um, we're chasing the game and, and we do, they, they hit us on the break. Dermy McVeigh, who I thought was outstanding today, he's back in the team, he's been out for three or four weeks. I thought he was probably our best player today. He was magnificent, never put a foot wrong. He makes a wonder block, gets up, and then maybe takes an extra touch on the ball. And say at this level or the level that we want to be at, centre forwards don't give in if they've missed the chance. You know, maybe at Championship and below that, if the centre forwards, he probably thinks he's only getting the one chance. Then he makes the tackle, and then the, and then that's it. Look, we'll learn from it. If we do nothing else, we have to learn. Look, I don't mind people making mistakes, but if they keep making continual mistakes, and obviously that's a problem. If we make one mistake and then next week we don't do that, I think we can deal with it and we can move on. The positive thing is you touched on there that you created chances and probably particularly had your best chances whenever you were down to ten men. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a case of if you're creating those chances, you know, the, the goals will come, especially with the fire power you have. Oh, hundred percent. Look, we always knew there was going to be an occasion where our centre forwards didn't score a goal. <laughs> yeah. And it and it's been coming, you know what I mean? But they can't keep bailing us out and we've maybe conceded, you know, silly goals when we've been rattling three and four in. So there was always an occasion now we don't want that occasion to be tonight. But from the game plan that we set up to create them chances then means that what we're working on in the training field comes, you know, the one where Conor McMenamin and Nick sit off the centre half, we work on that. We've worked on that the whole pre-season, we've worked on it, we've worked on it. And tonight's probably the first opportunity that it's happened because we're actually maybe, our training's tailored to playing against a better standard of player without being disrespectful to the championship teams. So they will try and play out. Mm -hmm. And we know that and then we sprung the trap and, we, and we've won it. And if there's one player in our squad that I'm thinking, if he's running through and goal, it's a goal. It's Conor McMenamin, and the ball takes the bubble, and obviously it goes over the bar. And then we work a corner, a set piece, against a team with eight, six foot plus guys, and we mm. manage to get the ball free inside the six yard box. Again, Conor McMenamin touch like blue, velvet all over the field, and it comes from six yards out, takes a touch, and it and it runs away from him. So I take them as positives because yeah. the stuff that we've worked on, it's created and it's come. Yeah, and all you don't get nothing for positives in football. You only get things for goals. And just lastly, obviously, you know, the, it's back to bread and butter of the league on Saturday, home game against Harden and Wolf Welders. You know, goes without saying, you want to maintain, if not you know, certainly extend the, the lead at the top. You know, looking at what you've seen tonight. Obviously, you've you've been here, you know, mm -hmm. since the summer. But looking at what you've seen tonight in your first game as a sole manager, um, you know, you've got to be sort of confident going to pick another three points up against the Welders this weekend. Look. I know it's going to be a tough game and I think it'll be very similar to tonight. They're, they're a similar team, you know, they'll go back to front early and they've two pacey boys up front, Danny McKay and Michael McClellan and obviously they've the experience of Davey Rainey. So it's going to be a tough game. I think this, I said it to the boys in dressing room, I think this will be the toughest game we've had all season because when we went to Welders early in the season, second or third game, they were on a bit of a sticky spell and they were kind of in and out and I think the manager's situation and Gary Smith was obviously getting linked with Glenn Todd and I don't think they were settled mm -hmm. from pre-season. Since then they've Obviously, they've flown up the table and, and they're there, and I still think they'll be there or thereabouts come the end of the season. I think, if I'm being honest, I think they'll be our main contenders going forward. So, I know the boys will have to be really, really up for this game on Saturday.